Okay, Fence Walker here with Steve, guy I've known two thirds of my life, uh, for the interview. First question is what is most important? In the world or to me? You can answer that any way you want, and you can answer that in multiple ways if you'd like. I would say keeping a smile, having a good life, enjoying life, even the small stuff. And my wonderful girlfriend, her amazing daughter, and my sweet motorcycle. Okay. Um, my next question is more about government and religion. Just what do you think about them? And I might get more specific depending on your answers. Well, I wish we could pull religion and people at other asses and let them think instead of using Bible quotes to just make dumb decisions. And government? Yeah, and government. Same thing? Huh? Same thing with government. Oh, I thought you were talking about government in religion. No, government and religion. Government, I would say, I wish we'd have a, a leader step up that someone that actually makes you proud to vote for him instead of trying to pick the lesser of two evils. You know, someone that you actually want to be behind. Closest thing I think we've had for that in years. I think Bernie's kind of interesting, but as far as the rest of them in the last few years, it's like, well, I hope they don't screw up our country that bad. Okay, I think I will go more specific with religion. And what is your history with religion? Um, <clears throat> I grew up with a mild religious background in my family, going to some Christian school that, or not Christian school, but Christian church kind of thing. And we weren't too big on it. Um, then later on in life, kind of walked away from that. Um, when I was in high school, a close friend was involved strongly with the Baptist Church and I started going there and kind of thought it was cool for a little bit or you know I kind of like the more the friendship of the thing more than that and then I got in trouble for questioning dumb decisions and things they were talking about um, such as a guy trying to raise money to uh, go save the Eskimo souls and saying how you know if we didn't help and uh, that they were all doomed to hell because, well, because they had not been saved yet. And I said, so, because of the fact that you're bad at raising money, God's dooming them to hell, didn't go over well and I wasn't quite welcome there anymore. <laughs> so was that the turning point for you or have you... Uh, I just kind of stepped farther and farther and farther away and the more people defend their religion, it's kind of like, it's kind of been the same effects when I was younger, when the big subject of gay marriage came out, you know, I was like, you know, well, we won't call it gay marriage, we'll call it something else, and then the more people tried to defend protecting marriage, or marriage, if whatever you want to call, uh, made me more, yeah, let's let anyone do what they want and stay away from the labeling of it and just marriage is marriage can't deal with it, you know, you don't like gay marriage, don't have one. And that's kind of what my religion thing has been, you know, I mean, I'm happy if someone else finds happiness in religion, but as far as <clears throat> when it starts persecuting other people, or like there was just some story that someone posted about a father who killed a son because he was gay, you know, because of his religious views. That's just kind of crappy and going, people need to start pulling their head out of their ass a little bit more. Um, this question, I, I think I need to rework it, but I'm going to give it the way I've been asking it. And that is, if you were a superhero, what would your superpower be and what would your hero name be? <laughs> I like this one. Yeah. Now this one I wish I would have had to think about before. Yeah. I'm 
Triumph Daytona Boy. That would be my hero name. What's that? Triumph Daytona Boy. Triumph Daytona Boy. Okay. That's, that's my motorcycle. That's what I figured. And bringing happiness to the world. That would be my superpower. Okay. Whoa. Um. I don't know. That's and, on and the spot answering. Yeah, but and 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 I like that. Um. That that that's really the the three questions about my basic interview. Um. My final question is usually, do you have any questions for me? Do you have Anything? a cure for allergies? Uh, no. Okay, then I guess I'm stumped at the moment. So there's nothing you've ever wanted to ask me that you thought, you know, if I had the opportunity, I'd ask my I, buddy. Usually, I've, I've never been afraid of asking questions, so most of the stuff I either know and uh, I don't think you've ever uh, been someone that has not given out information. Usually with talking to you, it's sometimes I wish I got a little less information. And I, I don't mean that in a bad way, but you know. Know, sometimes when I'm eating dinner, I get a call from you talking about your bowels being clogged up or that you're able to take a crap well. You know, sometimes that's kind of like, uh, it's an appetite killer sometimes. But no, I mean we've been friends for so many years. I think I, I think I know most things, you know. And I can't really, on the spot, being brain dead, think of any good questions that I'd want on film. Well, and and now I have some questions that go beyond my interviews. At what point did you realize that I had lost something that I will never ever get back? As in you, or as in me? Me. Um... Hmm... I would have to say, like, seeing when you were going through some of your, uh... Through some of your, uh, surgeries... Um... Seeing that, um... I was kind of sad to see you kind of not really losing your passion of chasing your robot your robotic dreams or becoming you know working with NASA or something of that sort you know um, I was kind of sad to see that you know it's because of the migraines and, and that that's limited to where you can't always chase that dream I wasn't sure you're going to answer that question fully but you did um, and then one other part I think another, the, the other thing was uh, when uh, you know most your other family, you could give two craps about anything. But I know when you uh, when you hit your uh, I don't know what you want to call it, you know your collision of consciousness or whatever. Um, I think I saw that as a really big loss for you, and I think that was a a friendship you kind of missed. That's that's probably the only one, and I, I I still don't regret giving up the entire family. Yeah, uh, no, I, I I get it. I, you know, I mean, like my immediate family, my parents, my brother, sister, and that, you know, <clears throat> I've never hit that point with them. But some of my aunts and uncles, uh, my cousins that I used to be close with, I I, I just. You know, just because someone shares a DNA strand does not mean that they're worthy of friendship or compassion or anything. Well, and, and I have another question that was kind of based off of you maybe not fully answering that last one, but you did. Um, the last time I was over at your place, I'm pretty sure you saw me twitch or have a small seizure or something. I do that every now and then. And I'm pretty sure you noticed it, but you glossed over it. I think it's because I do kind of stuff like that too. It's like there's a, uh, there's supposed to be like a, uh, I was watching something on it. It's like a minor level of Tourette's. And it's very more common, you know, it's not like the screaming nasty word out Tourette's that sometimes we I do that I, too. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I just want to assert that I'm sorry, I have Tourette's just so I can get away with doing that sometimes. Yeah. But, you know, like every so often I'll do weird twitches. She's seen me 
jump and like you know um, I have quite a few friends that actually have little twitches like that um, Greg which I don't know if you've ever met Greg but uh, it's funny we'll have conversations and both of us just be sitting there like <laughs> you know and, and, and no one says anything just because we both do it and it's it's just something that it, it wasn't anything I was concerned about because <laughs> I've done it for most of the years of my life, you know, it's just like when you talking about ringing in your ears. I've had ringing for, I think mine started uh, around uh, 10 to 12. So, 34, 36 years I've had ringing in my ears constant. So when people talk about that, it's like, eh, yeah. So I, I, I think what those last couple of questions were more around is uh, what's it like knowing someone so close to you uh, having such a disability as mine? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's... Uh, you know, sometimes I, I, I don't overthink it. I just think of it as that over a disability, it's more like just you're my friend and it's who you are. And I guess maybe that's why, you know, I mean, um, sometimes I, you know, sometimes I kind of feel bad because I know this wasn't the, you know, back growing up and in the gleeful teenage days, you know, I mean, I know this wasn't the life you, you chose and, you know, I didn't say like, hey, let's see, um, career decisions, painful migraines, cluster headaches, a brain tumor! I want that! You know, I mean, um, and, uh, you know, some days I, I like seeing with you dealing well with your life, and sometimes I struggle seeing you struggle with your life, you know? Um, I've seen, you know, I, I've seen you become more social, you know? Um, I really enjoyed seeing that moving here from your other places. I think you've been more social, more doing something, instead of just locked up in a room behind a computer screen. Well, the, the endometriosis events last month, um, I, I created an event called Friends of Endo. Mm -hmm. um, and I talked to you about this before. And I just wanted... <clears throat> chronic pain sufferers to get their friends and family to, to share and express what it's like being with someone, I guess you can say, abnormal. Um, certainly out of the ordinary, we'll put it that way. Okay. <laughs> um, and I, 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 I think you answered that fairly well. So again, is there anything else you would like to add? I, don't know, I think sometimes uh, it just gives you a different perspective on life, either from your view or from my view, from seeing my view of you. Um, I'd have to say for like the chronic pain stuff and that, you know, it's you know, it's it's hard to some people outside aren't going to really accept it, understand it, you know, the the loss of energy, the you know. Uh, I, I get small levels of headaches, migraines, and I mean, I'm just ba basically, you know, dip a toe into, you know, some of your guys' world, and I mean, I, I don't know, you know, I mean, it's a, uh, have a little, sometimes you just gotta take a breath, and you know, it's not everyone's gonna get it right away, and you can't let it eat you up because they don't get it, you know? They come around and figure it out, you know. If they want to accept who it is, who you are. Great, you know. What I mean, I, I'm I'm your friend because I'm your friend, you know. What I mean, and it's not always the easiest, but I've also come to grips with the fact of just, you know, look at what's going on with Tom. If he's having a bad day, okay, well, just give him space and call me back later, and I don't take it too work, you know. I mean, if I can do anything to help you, you know, I usually do, but. If I can't, sometimes just either be there to that person to talk to or say, okay, man, I'll get off the phone and you have a good night. Yeah. You know? Um, You've had days like that, too. It's like, hey, uh, I'm busy. All right, bye. Yeah, no, no. I've had, you know, I've had good days, dark days, you know. Um, 
spots where my life really was not where it wants to be, you know, but, you know, letting someone else's ignorance destroy your mood and happiness is just kind of learned to... It's kind of your bad at years. that point, huh? huh? It's your bad at that point. Yeah, well, it's not really that you're bad, it's just like, I don't know, it's sometimes just you gotta, you gotta step back and... Um, Not overstress <clears throat> about someone else's ignorance. You know, you can't you can't change everyone. You know, yelling and screaming at people, slamming them upside the head, though it might be fun, it's not going to force anyone to learn or figure things out. You know, if they uh, for the people that've been around it and understand it, you know, um, seen it firsthand, lived through it. You know, it's a little different thing. You know, it's. Well, something I, I've shared with the, the chronic pain group, um, you know, they're, they're in a panic and a stress because they're going into surgery in an hour or tomorrow morning or something. <clears throat> and I pointed out that, well, you know, anxiety and depression, there are, there are other things to feel, but more importantly that if, if you're stressing out and even if the worst thing happens, that means you've wasted that much of your life stressing. So if, if you can look at it at that point and say, all right, I really don't need to stress. It's not beneficial to me. Some people get that, some people don't. But the, the people that do seem to really appreciate it. Well, it's, I get that, you know. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, I don't know. You, you can't always control every bad thing that happens in your life, but you can control how it affects you. You know, you can you can choose to not worry. You know, I mean, not not I'm saying not worry, but not live and dwell and stress on everything that's horrible in your life. You can, like you've talked about your little jars of happiness moments. You know, think about some of the good things. I I kind of you know I got sick and I spent you know probably a month when when I had the flu so bad in in o fourteen. You know, losing all that weight, the uh, the crazy anxiety, the depression, you know, from being that sick, being in the hospital multiple times. You know, maybe that month, that month of doing all that, it's kind of, you know, similar to what goes on in your life. But maybe that's kind of, after that, it kind of made me do a lot of thinking of, you know, enjoy the little sunny shy days, you know, instead of, you know, bitching about your job or bitching about this, you know. Find something that find you know find some little source of happiness, you know. Rather you know maybe it's one minute of happiness out of a 24-hour crappy day. You can let that one minute shine your life better than dwelling on 24 hours of going, man, this sucks. Yeah, that that's that's the joy jar that you mentioned. Uh, yeah, you, that's your thing, man. Like 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 the anger bottle, uh, you can you can put joy in a jar and save it for later. Yep. <clears throat> and some of the women have taken that literally. They actually now have a mason jar with maybe a caramel candy in it, or or a picture of their their children or something. Um, uh, they they also do wristbands a lot um, for endo awareness. <clears throat> so I just wanted to mention that on the camera there. I do the anger jar. A little write a little note of something that pisses you off when the jar fills up. Have a nice good bonfire. Yeah. A little lighter fluid. That's <laughs> kind of while I was sick, that was one of the things I thought about a lot of things that was irritating me. I you know, I've never been a big self help person or anything like that, but I kinda when you're staring at the same T V you can't sleep, you can't feel good, you can't wake up, you can't sleep, you can't you just in a state of blah and just delirious. I started writing stuff that was irritating me and I filled up a little paper and then when I started feeling better about a month and a half later I started looking back at all this incoherent babble of just some stuff stupid and bad some of it was actually legitimate things that bugged me and then I threw it out in the barbecue and I covered it in lighter fluid and I lit it up and uh, I smoked a cigar and I drank a beer and I think since then I kind of found a little bit more of, I guess, an inner peace or just a, 
lack of letting crap bug me as much. A, a good coping skill. Better coping skills, yeah. Well, Steve, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Are you flipping that thing off? Of course I did. There's a fucking <laughs> button.